What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. What is this? This is my new favorite RC uh, that I've had in a while. You guys are familiar with the channel. You've seen videos from the Peacock Pit, Mr. Weir's Backyard Track, or what I call RC Heaven in Northern California. We've been running a lot out there in the last year or so, and this is that rig, and I've been using it to beat the life out of some of our lower end systems, if you will. Uh, this right now has a Max 10 G2 80 amp with the 3652 motor, that's 4,000 kV, uh, 68 spur with a 16 tooth pinion gear using uh, normal size short course wheels and tires. Uh, this particular set is the J Concepts choppers, and we run these on the Pro line wheels that have the replaceable offsets because every once in a while wheel nut gets loose and you'll strip an offset or we've even broken rims before so we can replace those that's kind of nice on the front i'm actually running sand tires these are dumont's it kind of happened by accident that we tried them because it was the only rib tires that they had at the time so i threw them on there um, it has a set of pro line shocks on it the pro line uh, I think these are the ones specific for the slash, and then I'm using the stiffest Traxxas springs that they make. Um, oil is maybe non-existent as far as the, the, the shock goes. The, it started out with probably 25 and 20, if I remember correctly, but it hasn't been serviced since. Um, this, Mr. Weir found these, because the track gets pretty wet. We have to keep it pretty watered down, so sometimes you get overwatered and you get a lot of mud buildup. I cleaned this before this video, believe it or not. So we call it uh, the, the, the truck panties, but it lets you have access to the battery tray. And then I zip tied some old springs onto my battery bar to help keep the, the tent popped up while it's closed. So that it does, because it would build up dirt in there when it get all flat. So. Like I said, I've had this thing running for probably about a year. It's been on the track dozens upon dozens of times, maybe close to a hundred battery packs through this thing. And about the only thing we wear out are drive shafts. This still has, I think I wore out a top shaft on this thing pretty early on, but it's the 272R Pro transmission from Traxxas that they put in most of their newer higher end builds. This started life as a Traxxas VXL slash and slowly but surely found all the little things that you need to do to keep a slash running. Uh, nut and bolt your shocks. We do long th screw, through screws here with a nut on the end. We try to run a little longer screws on all of the shock ends so they get a little more meat in there. Uh, the other one is that if you're gonna be using the stock uh, screw-in style suspension pins on the right side of the truck. You put them in from the front. Uh, the, the front hinge pin up here I have put in backwards. The rear hinge pin I have put in backwards. And the outer hinge pin I have put in from the front. And it makes it so that it doesn't loosen itself. If you've ever had a two-wheel drive slash and you've run it for any amount of time, those, those hinge pins work themselves loose kind of all by themselves. So putting them in backwards helps deal with that quite a bit. And for me, it's huge because we can run the vehicle a lot longer, like a whole battery pack without having to stop and check screws and stuff like that. So kind of nice. Now, if you are doing a slash build, you may have encountered the speed control mounting situation. The stock speed control screws into the chassis and there's no screw mounts on this speed control. So what I do is I take a set of uh, flush cutters and you'll do wherever there's a rib you'll do a couple cuts along it like every i don't know quarter inch half inch or so and then you can twist those pieces off and then flush cut them flat on the chassis after that that way you can get the ribs out of there not do any real damage to the chassis or we have to worry about using them i hate using power tools but sometimes you can smooth it out with a uh, dremel afterwards to get all those little edges of the ribs but the the real trick that i do is i do three layers of the double side tape onto the speed control that way it's got some nice cushion underneath it and it'll kind of conform to those ribs ribs. Uh, make sure that you clean that surface off real good afterwards. Of course, I use a little bit of denatured alcohol in a rag, and I like to heat up my double side tape uh, before I stick it down, either with a lighter or a heat gun. It makes it kind of uh, cure a little bit quicker. So I will say having a waterproof setup has been nice. We do, like I said, run in the mud all the time, and before we had the truck panties, this thing would come back, you know, caked in mud, so to speak. So I have been, I don't know, testing that waterproofness quite a bit, and uh, everything's been fine for the most part. But this is just one of those kind of offshoots we do a lot of nerding and i feel like some of the stuff when we show it to people like man i never would have thought of that so i like to take a little bit of time to uh, share some of the the beater trucks that i have and i mean it looks ridiculous i understand if you're cringing at home seeing this right now but to a lot of the folks that are getting into this stuff uh, things like this help out a ton as far as 
making the RC a little bit more enjoyable so that the, the vehicle's more reliable and you're not working on it and dealing with screws and all that sort of stuff. So. All right, so I took the, the, the dust cover off so you can get a look at the install here because that's what we're really here for. What sort of small things that I've done different in my two-wheel drive slash install. Uh, like I said, you remove the fins and the mounts that are there. You can do that with a pair of side cutters. You do a couple, like three or four cuts along each of the ribs and you can twist those out with a pair of pliers or you can, you can flat cut along them that way pretty easily without running any risk of damage to the chassis. The other one that I like to let everybody know about is running your speed controls receiver wire up and around. Come stock with it under the battery. That might be okay, but I have seen plenty of folks have some problems from that happening. They jam the battery in there, the wire moves around, whatever the case may be, the battery gets hammered on, gets flattened out, and you get some damage that way. So I like to run mine up and around, and in a slash, because the servo wire comes out of there, you can kind of tidy it up right on the servo wire to keep it clean, and then you leave yourself just enough room so that you know your battery box and everything's not getting in the way there. It is just barely enough wire, so when you go to mount this guy in, you want to push the speed control kind of as far back as you can. Uh, I got this little screw guy in here as a, a extra old servo horn as a little wire keeper to stop that guy from bouncing around. Uh, the wires moving around can lead to some problems over time, so if you can minimize that, it's certainly a good idea. I did swap out the stock radio for a sweet FlySky Noble NB4 Pro Plus, uh, and the this is the eight channel receiver because that's what I had. But if I didn't tell you guys, this is a very, very, very nice feature packed radio, easy to use touch screen. Um, I know a lot of nice things you could say about a radio, but I mean, I have been a fanboy of Futaba radios and stuff like that for a long time, and this is nice to see a nice high quality option out there. I'm um, not gonna lie, FlySky sent us these or sent me these because our their S plus two protocol works in all of our rock crawl stuff, so you can do speed control adjustments from the radio. And yes, we're hoping to bring that to a much wider range of speed controls. It's not just tuning the speed control; you get the data out of the speed control as well, temperatures, RPMs, current. And, you know, all, all that fun stuff. And look, they, they even put our, our, the name of the channel on there. So thanks, Calvin. That's, that's awesome. Calvin's a guy that I know from Flysky. Another kind of simple pro tip that comes up all the time. If you are doing a servo install or a servo upgrade, changing out your radio, travel adjustments on your steering are super important. The left and right being equal. And a lot of that has to do with how the servo gets up. The horn needs to be on the servo so that it's straight up and down what's in the rack. And that the steering rack is also... Uh, at 90 degrees to all of that when it's all said and done. It helps the steering be a lot more equal left to right. Um, that's something that we've been running into with all the guys, you know, kind of getting slashes and working on them type of deal. So I'd like to mention that uh, when I have an opportunity. The other one, don't forget to calibrate. I've had plenty of guys put in a new system, they plug it in, they turn it on, they drive it around and they leave it at that. There's a calibration process so that the speed control learns your neutral, your throttle and your brake or your full reverse output of your radio. Make sure that you do that. If you've never heard of it before, it's in your instruction manual. There's a picture that shows you how to do it in everything and we've got plenty of videos on how to calibrate. So this all stems from wanting to share some video of a track day at uh, Norm's and Mark's house. There's been plenty of buddies we've met through backyard track racing. One of them built his own backyard track. So Norm invited us over. He just had some shoulder surgery, so he needed entertainment. So we took our slash over, slashes over there and we ran some backyard track. Uh, you'll see me in the white truck. Uh, Corwin is in the uh, black and white truck. And then Weir is in whatever the other truck is. Uh, it's either gonna be pink or green, depending. Because after Norm's, we went over to the Peacock pit and ran some laps over there. So I needed an excuse to share some of that footage and and yeah, share some of the stuff on the installs here because these trucks have been through hell and back. So um, I know it seems really silly. This thing's hammer on. It's, it's a jalopy. There's barely shock on the oils. But man, does it take a beating. And we have tons of fun racing them. So enjoy. <laughs> I push you with pressure.
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so dialed. <laughs> I think my truck works a little bit better when it dries out. <laughs> I, did, I tried to go for the gap. Oh. Hold him off, Corwin. Hold him off. Good job, buddy. Good job. Yeah. Woo. That is a lot of throttle inputs and steering. Like I'm getting throttle hand cramp. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh. Oh, oh. No. I was about to say, I think I can catch him in a lap. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, you fucking... Oh, later! That's very good. Much fun, many smiles, super awesome! Norm, this is way sicker than I expected. Not a lot of loam down there to work with. <laughs> uh oh. High flying. <laughs> oh, God. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's capture Corwin. Corwin, you have to stay in front of us. This is a pursuit race here.
<laughs> wow, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Door banger, that was sick. <laughs> oh, that was pretty money. <laughs> Just perfectly backwards. Oh, 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 go, go. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, damn it! <laughs> oh, the nomenclature. It's tricky, but when you get it right, it's magical. Oh, yeah, you just make the guy break, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn it, dude. I was still on the brakes, too. <laughs> oh, I was oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was nasty. Thank you. <laughs> and stays in the lead. Nice job, Mr. Weir. Thank you. <laughs> No. <laughs> I was going too tender for Tony. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Oh. Oh, sorry. Nice. <laughs>
damn it. Oh, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Did you hear the tap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I got so excited when I saw you blow it too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 no, I oh, That's a loss! <laughs> Woo! Thank God. Dude, that was... <laughs> That was a little too intense, I think. That was a long one. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that you've seen here, shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We will be more than happy to help. You like podcasts? We do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. We give away free RC stuff each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. Just look up RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing, on your favorite podcast service. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in. New every Tuesday, it's The Charlie Show. We will see you all next time.